I'm Scott Allen Miller. It is the 19th of November, 2022, and this is my vlog of daily life in Leon, Nicaragua. Welcome to the show. It is Saturday, and I am filming in the courtyard. I'm getting towards the end of where I think I need to keep filming in the courtyard because my foot is getting a lot better, and I'm hoping in about 48 hours I'm going to feel confident going out and getting some walking around footage for you guys again. For the moment, I'm keeping it safe, staying here. Today is Saturday, and what I have going on today is... Finally, I have no one here, nobody needs me, it is quiet, and I am taking the entire day to work. I know that doesn't sound very exciting, and I bet a lot of you are like, that sounds kind of awful, why would you want to do that? I am someone who gets very stressed out when I get behind on work, and I have a lot of work to do, and the past week or a little bit more has been extremely busy, and just a lot of new things have come up, whether we had someone quit, we had a new person get hired, uh, new projects are coming up, things that we're looking at and evaluating, just a lot has happened. And so because there's been so much movement and different systems have been changing around, and sorry for the ice cream bell in the background, uh, there's just been so much happening that I've gotten a bit behind. And so this is Saturday. So starting on Thursday night, I was right on the verge of not being able to get the videos out for you guys. And so I worked like crazy on Thursday night and crazy yesterday morning, trying to get enough done that Valentina could get thumbnails done, that we had enough buffer that we could make it to Monday. And we managed to do that, but it was a crazy push. And I had absolutely no time. I was running in and trying to get videos done as fast as possible and I don't like having to do that so today I actually have some of the best quiet time that I've had in as long as I can remember I am here at the office with my courtyard studio as I'm going to call it and I'm using this time to actually get caught up so that I can Get, feel comfortable having a bunch of things under my belt. So I've got like regular work that's getting done. I'm answering customers, responding to emails, getting uh, the vlog as caught up as humanly possible. So I'm actually recording this on the 19th as things are happening, even though it's not a very interesting day. Uh, and I've got very, very little left to catch up. And my main channel, Sam IT, now has many videos recorded, multiple ones edited, and I'm working on building up my goal is to actually record it an entire year in advance. And then of course, as news items or something really interesting happens in the industry or someone has a question I need to answer, I can jump in and answer those, but I will interject them as secondary videos in a week. And I wanna have at least one video coming out every week for a year. So that's gonna take a bit to build up a year of uh, backlog. And I want to get that done or get as close to it as possible before we go to Christmas in Texas, because I don't want to be recording Sam IT while I'm there. I want that done and just all set up. So it's automatically scheduled and bringing those out uh, while I'm there. So working to get that done, and that is moving along really well, making great progress on that today. I did get multiple comments from people on how good this setup looks, and I moved the camera to a different angle. I'm trying a few different little shifts, a little bit different lighting, different part of day. I think we have the audio figured out with the Tascam. I had to turn off the auto leveler and the one video I did previous to this one because uh, I don't record them in order necessarily. It sounded like it was fixed, and the Olympus just looks amazing. Consistently, everyone says, ooh, Oh, that looks really good. What is that? It's the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II with the M Zuiko 25 millimeter f1.8 at f1.8. No, no polarizers, no nothing like that. Just very basic, and it looks absolutely amazing. I'm actually quite some distance away. I cannot, you know, we're gonna see if we can. I can't um, touch the camera. I can't even get halfway to it. That's how far away I am uh, from it. But that gives a really good. Uh, separation with the background while wow, it's really struggling to bring me back into focus there. One of the complaints with the Olympus, its focus is good, but it's not lightning fast. That is one of the things, I mean, obviously a Sony is known for how good their autofocus is. It's just boom and it never loses you, but I don't like the way that Sony's look and I don't really want to go spend a lot of money on one. Don't get me wrong, an FX30 is affordable and absolutely amazing. And if I was going to get a Sony, the FX30 without a doubt is what I want but it doesn't make sense. It's not what I'm gonna get if I could upgrade my camera. It is the Fuji X-H2, not the S, that I would want. And uh, it would solve most of the autofocus issues. Uh, it's much, much faster, but it's hard to beat how good this Olympus looks. And I already have it and have an amazing set of lenses. So I love getting to use it. And it really is great when I get feedback from you guys that it looks so good because I think it looks great. And I know how much effort I put into selecting this camera and these lenses and having the options that I have. And I just love how it turns out. So 
thank you. And uh, I will do my best to record more with this. And like I've said before, when we move to the new digs in almost exactly two weeks, we're under two weeks at this point, which is great. Um, one, I'm going to do a full walkthrough of everything we have here so you can see all the space and understand how it lays out. Um, and, uh, and I'm going to make some Central American living videos from that as well. And I'm going to have a lot of new space at the new house where I can set up and use the Olympus all the time in totally different ways and get a lot of variety even when I'm not able to get out and walk around, unlike here where I, the variety is extremely low. I get a tiny bit, very, very little. So that is the bulk of my day. I've been doing videos all day. I've already done, I'm pushing, I think, 10 videos at this point that are done. My goal for the day is 20. I'm not going to hit it, but I'm trying to get as close as possible uh, because I can record only when there's daylight. So I'm going crazy trying to record uh, and get these videos backlogged so that then I can edit them once it's dark out. Also, once it's dark out, got to head to the grocery store. We have no food in the house. That's not really true. We have quite a bit of food in the house, but we don't have all the parts necessary for things. Most importantly, we have no buns, no bread, and none of our good cheese. We have only a little bit of cheese at all, and it's definitely not good cheese. Um, so we're going to get out and try um, to get to the grocery store as soon as it's too dark to record, uh, get stocked up on stuff, get back and make a, kind of a late lunch, early dinner for the girls. I'm hoping to not have to go out tonight go out to eat um, i'm really trying to stay here just edit and eat and hopefully watch some rings of power with liesel uh and um uh, and and trying to avoid going out more than necessary tomorrow my plan is more or less the same i have no major plans i have another sequestered day i have a little bit of meetings in the morning not too bad hoping to get a ton more videos done most importantly at this point i have enough of both the blog the vlog and of Sam IT that I'm not in a panic about those. I have a backlog of editing for some other shows I need to catch up on. So I'm hoping to be able to get to that as well. Two of them by the end of tomorrow. I also have some work work to do that it's not video editing uh, related that I need to do for tomorrow as well. So that's where we are. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon right now. So that is my plan taking us into the evening. I didn't get a chance to mention this yesterday. One of the things that we're always trying to do here is find things that are missing in the ecosystem for food, the, the culinary ecosystem here in Nicaragua and find ways around it. And one of those we just figured out, I see we, Dominica did this. She figured out, so we're able to do this. We're able to go to Managua and get frozen salmon burger patties. And they're good, but they're also very expensive. And they're only available at, Co at Price Mart, which is Costco. And when you do that, that means you have, um, you have to make this special trip. You have to have a Costco membership or a Price Mart membership. And you have to then bring it back frozen. And then you have to store it in the freezer. And then you have to eat it within, within some reasonable amount of time, it, quite some time because it's frozen. Uh, and so the whole thing is, is complicated and expensive. And that's not ideal, obviously. Uh, so she's working on making her own salmon burgers. And she, last night she worked on that and came up with one or found a recipe for one or something. That was excellent. So she made salmon burgers for the first time last night. Uh, and we all really, really liked them. So we're looking forward to that. And then it's using salmon that comes in a can, which is far cheaper and can be stored for a much longer period of time and doesn't require refrigeration, which is costly, right? The more things we have to store in a freezer means the more freezer space we need, the more freezer energy that's going on. That would be uh, condenser energy, obviously. And uh, it, it can just make things better. So that said, so that was just the one thing she did last night. She has also come up with some amazing breakfast sausages and hamburger patties that are vegetarian. So fish and vegetarian like fake meat type, type options are a really big deal for us because we're vegetarians or ovo pescatarians and those things either are missing from or tend to be pretty light here in the Nicaragua ecosystem. Yes, we can get almost anything, but the cost is high. It takes a long time to go get them. The selection is low, whatever. Being able to make that ho at home is a game changer for us because we can make it at home or at the restaurant and we are closing in on hopefully having a private chef in the next 12 days or so and being able to teach her to make those things is a really big deal it just makes our lives so much easier and saves money that's important because some things like salmon really expensive here so finding ways around that is is really significant for us all right today's topic which i just touched on and someone did ask me about this is a current question from the last week is please explain Price Mart. What is Price Mart? So here in Nicaragua, we have one singular Costco, but it's super important and it's called Price Mart. I think that's not actually true. I think there's two of them. They are in Managua and Managua only. They are in every way 
Costco. I don't know why they changed the name here. I've never heard a story about it, but they are Costco's. You have to have a Costco membership and they are called Price Mart. They carry all the Kirkland products just like Costco. They operate just like Costco. They take Discover and Cash just like Costco. They are Costco and they are a lifesaver here in Nicaragua. We also have Walmarts here, but Walmart here tends to carry a bit of different stuff than Walmart in the US. So yes, it's important to be able to go to Walmart. And yes, we have Walmart satellites all over the place. Like here in Leon, we have Pali and Maxi Pali. They are not the same as a regular Walmart, but they're part of the Walmart system and they carry some of the things. We go into Managua and get to actual Walmarts, but again, they're not quite the Walmart in the US, but they give you most of the feel. Costco, Price Mart basically is exactly the same as it is in the US. It has a huge selection of things and it's really important because it's one of the only places where we can get so many of the products that you would get from the US. And obviously, if you're Nicaraguense, you may not care at all. It may be a really minor thing. But if you are not Nicaraguense, if you're from the US or Canada or Mexico or any place that depends on Costco and it's a major part of your ecosystem, having that here means we have access to, even though it's 90 minutes away, tons of flavors and products and, and concepts from home. And it's really important. And they sell a lot of things you may not think about, like pizzas and cakes. Surprisingly, Costco cakes or Price Mart cakes are sold all over the country. People drive in with refrigerated trucks, buy as many as they can fit in their truck from the store. They go through like cart after cart after cart, just cakes. And they take the cakes and they drive all over the country and sell them in stores. Here in Leon, we have multiple restaurants and uh, hotels that sell Price Mart cakes and they advertise it. You just you go by, they have big signs. We have Price Mart cakes. You go in, you can order ahead. They will go to Managua and get them and bring them there. They have ones ready to go in the store. Some of the grocery stores sell them. Like it's a big thing. People look for them because they're excellent cakes and actually getting American style pastries of that sort are is relatively difficult in the country. So they have one that people recognize from all over and they bring it here. In case you saw the blip and the change in light, one of the problems with using the amazing Olympus that looks so fantastic here is that it overheats really quickly. It takes, uh, because I do 4K, uh, the, the frame rate on everything, not the frame rate, the bit rate on everything, it overheats really, really fast between the battery and the processor and the card. And I get about 15 minutes in open air going, because I so I put it in the air conditioning, get it right in front of the air, cool it way down, bring it out, and I get about 15 minutes before it overheats, even on a relatively cool day with no sunlight on it whatsoever it's a little bit rough. So when I'm recording interior, this works great. It'll run forever. But as soon as I come outside, Nicaragua kills every camera. My iPhone essentially can run for forever, but it is hot when you go to pick it up. The GoPro will uh, overheat and shut down from time to time, but it's not too bad. I've probably had it do it about 10 times while I'm filming, but I'm very conscious of that. I keep it out of the sun. Uh, when I know I'm doing something really hot, I do things to cool it down or take a break. But because I use the media kit on it, it overheats quite a bit. So Costco or Price Mart is very significant here. And almost certainly you're going to want to plan some amount of regular trips to go to it and to have a membership for it and to simply use it. Now you may stockpile things, buy in bulk. If you live in Managua, you'll be going to it all the time, almost certainly. But if you live outside Managua, well, maybe if you're in Messiah or Granada, you may continue to use it just regularly. You'll just run in. But if you're outside the capital district, if you're in Leon, San Juan del Sur, Matagalpa, Esteli, places like that, you're going to want to schedule a trip to go down. And what we used to do is actually rent a van, meaning we would get like a taxi to, to rent a van and they would drive the van down for us. We would load it completely and bring it back and have all of those bulk supplies, whether it's paper or uh, pastries or flour or whatever, we would get it in big bulk there and bring it back. Price Mart is so significantly cheaper than most things in the country. Now, keep in mind, it is not the place to go get you know, pineapples because pineapples are cheap on the street. But if you need to get a kind of supply that's a bit more unique, that is the kind of stuff that Price Mart carries, and especially things that are not Nicaraguense necessarily, then, then Price Mart is almost certainly going to be your cheapest option in the country or near to it, and definitely the place with the best selection. And for those who are not familiar, Kirkland products are extremely high quality. One of the things that Price Mart has done, or Costco, has uh, made their Kirkland brand, while its logo is really goofy, the quality that they maintain is extremely high. One of their rules that I'm always told, and I totally believe it, is that in order to get the Kirkland 
brand onto something that you must have met or exceeded the quality of the major competitors in the market. They don't have to be the best. It's not crazy, but you do have to be as good or better. And so getting their peanut butter, it's better than most of the brands. I would put it second only to Peter Pan. I certainly prefer Peter Pan, but Kirkland is the only acceptable alternative for all of us. We can get wine from them very affordably, and it's good. It's not the best, but it is quite good, better than the generic stuff in the store, and so on with nearly every product. You know that if you're getting Kirkland brand, it is at least going to be good enough, probably really good, possibly the best you're gonna be able to find. So it's going to be almost certainly a huge part of your personal experience in Nicaragua to one way or another be using Pricemart. I'm not saying you have to rent a van. I'm not saying you have to go crazy. I'm not saying you have to get all of your bulk products there, but chances are at a very minimum, you are going to end up wanting to have someone who has a membership there and have them do shopping with you or take you with them or whatever, and at least get a small number of items because there's always gonna be something that you miss or that you want or that it's cheaper. And by doing that, it'll make the experience a little bit better. Not the cost of living is high here, the cost of living is incredibly low, but part of that is being able to get the things that you want at good prices, that's how you do it. It's weird to find that price mark is the answer to so many things. And what's really interesting, because of all that, because the prices are so good, there's such a great selection and it's unique items you can't get anywhere else, Costco or Price Mart tends to be used by, gro by, by restaurants and by hotels all over the country. You see people just from every single institution that you will ever run into, except for the little local places, and they go in regularly to stock up and bring supplies. Now, of course, they use other suppliers for different things and they manage to keep themselves unique, but that almost everyone is using Price Mart for something is almost a given. It is just ubiquitous because there aren't that many options. And remember, this is a country that's only the size of a large city. It's smaller than a Dallas or a Houston metro area, smaller than a Philadelphia metro area. So because of that, there aren't huge numbers of these kinds of things everywhere. There's some central ones located in Managua and that is really it. So chances are you are going to want to get a membership at Price Mart, get access to a membership at Price Mart and use it at least once a while, if not all the time. Thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. Leave your comments below. Ask any questions, comments, everything. I think I said that twice. And if you'd like to support the channel right across here, I'm going to put a bar. You can buy me a coffee. This comes directly to me. It makes a huge difference. Uh, and of course, if you share on social media, tell your friends, get on Facebook, let people know about this channel, the information about Nicaragua, about traveling, about living abroad, about cameras that overheat way too often. Every single break in this video is because the camera overheated and it's going to overheat any second. Thanks for joining me. I will see all of you after you like, subscribe, comment. You got it? Okay. Tomorrow.